Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to use these three kinematics equations, uh, what they mean, when you should use them, what the variables mean too. Because we're going to be using these a lot, either by themselves or in conjunction with each other, and they can help you figure out anything about the motion of an object. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is the variables. So when you see x, x means horizontal position or position on the vertical, I'm sorry, the horizontal axis. So it just means position, it doesn't mean how far it traveled. So if you're at that point, that's x. But if you travel from that point over to this point, right, that distance is delta x. That's the distance you traveled, or the displacement, right? Depending on whether you're talking about a vector or a scalar. That's as opposed to, let's say, I drop something from here to here, right? In that case, that would be delta y. Both of them are distances, right? They're positions and you can figure out distances, but we have to differentiate between x and y because when we start talking about things later on in y, there's gravity that affects them. Gravity doesn't affect things uh, as far as motion-wise in the x-plane. Vf and V0 are initial velocity and final velocity, so that little subscript tells you whether it's final or initial, and that zero, you pronounce it V not all right so you can call it v initial whatever but it's called v not okay and then a is obviously acceleration and then delta t is time interval okay so this first equation is for velocity as a function of time so notice on here i have these x subscripts all those x subscripts means is that we're talking about something that's happening in the x direction because if you have another equation like there are some on the formula sheet i'm going to give you that have y then it would mean in the y direction, right? So those x's just mean in the x direction. So what this equation really looks like is final equals initial plus acceleration times the time interval. So let's solve a problem with it. So here's an example problem. You have something that's accelerating from rest to 27.8 in a time of 3.4 seconds. What's the acceleration? So the first thing you want to do is determine the variables you have present. So I have from 0 to 27.8, so that means 0 is my initial velocity, 27.8 is my final velocity. These are just conversions. And then my time interval is 3.4. So once you have those, the second thing you want to do is choose the equation and rearrange for the unknown you want. Don't just plug numbers in and try to solve. I want you to rearrange the numbers first, I'm sorry, rearrange the equation first and then plug your numbers in and solve. So going back and looking at those things, I did these in order, right? So the equation that we're gonna use is gonna be, so I'm trying to solve for the acceleration, right? So let's take this equation and rearrange for acceleration. And that's what I get. Acceleration equals Vf minus V naught over delta T. So you should be able to do that, that's just algebra. So now, now that I've rearranged it, I can go plug my numbers in. And when you plug the numbers in, you get 27.8 minus 0 over 3.4. And that comes out to... So that's going to be the acceleration of this car. Okay, so the second equation is for position as a function of time. You notice in the first equation you had velocities and times. Now you have initial position, final position, and time. And you have an initial velocity. Okay, so this is for if you want to know how far it went. So something to notice about this equation, see this mess right here? This x equals x naught. Okay, everybody freaks out when they look at this equation because it's got three parts to add up, right? But in reality, what I want you to do is when you see it, think of this part as subtracting that x naught over and I get x minus x naught equals all that. So x minus x naught, if you look at that, what that is, whenever you have a final minus an initial that's equal to the change. So x minus x naught is really just delta x. So what this equation says is instead of all this it says delta x equals v naught t plus half a t squared. Looks like that. And that's easier to use because now delta x is, it doesn't matter if you have like an initial position because you can just plug in and solve for how far it went. Okay, and the other thing to notice too is if you start at rest, 
See that variable right here, that V naught? If you have a problem where you're starting at rest, this is going to be zero. And that means whatever time I have, if I multiply that by zero, this whole thing is going to go to zero. So that leaves you with just this part of the equation, which makes it a lot simpler. I'm telling you, like 80% of the time you use this equation, something's going to get canceled out or go to zero. So it's really one of the easier ones to work with. Okay, so let's solve a problem using that equation. So I'm going to rewrite it. Okay, so first, let's pick out the variables we know. So accelerates on runway at this, so this is my acceleration. And then this is my time interval, right? And then something else you have to just figure out from using context clues, right? If it says it starts from rest, a lot of times they won't say it'll start at zero meters per second. It just says starts from rest. Rest equals zero meters per second, right? So when you see something that starts from rest, you automatically know that the initial velocity is zero. So I know initial velocity acceleration time. So here's my equation. I don't need to rearrange because I'm trying to find distance, right? So let's just go ahead and look at this equation plug in. So what I have is this when I plug everything in. And so again, look, like I said, if you start from rest, 0 times 32.8, that means all of this is 0. So that means this part is what I'm solving. So when I go ahead and solve that, I'm left with 1,721.34 meters as the distance traveled. Okay, so this last one, if you look at the equation, you should be able to tell what variable that had been there is not there anymore. So the variable that's missing is time. In this equation, this is velocity as a function of position. So this would be a case like if I know the speeds and I know where it was at, but I don't know the time, you can solve still for velocity or acceleration or position. Okay, something to notice here, the velocities are squared, right? And then also see how right here I have that x minus x naught again? You can just think of it as distance traveled, delta x, right? That's just a fancy way of saying how far it went. When you see x minus x naught, like don't freak out. It's just delta x. Final minus initial is change. Okay, so last one. Let's practice using it. Uh, let's pick out our variables. So I have the speed that it's traveling at initially, which is 20, so that's my initial velocity. It slows down at a rate of 3 meters per second each second, so that's the rate that it's slowing right? That's the definition of acceleration. So that's the acceleration. And then I want to know how far it travels, right? So that's going to be delta x. So something else you have to pick out again, if it comes to a stop, right, that means that vf is going to be zero. Okay, so let's look at all these and plug numbers in. Well, let's rearrange first. So this is what my equation looks like, right? When I rearrange it, I solve for delta x. And now I'm going to plug in the numbers. So this is where you have to be careful with positive and negatives. This acceleration right here, it needs to be negative. Because if you look at it, the bus is traveling this way, but it's slowing down. And if it's slowing down, we already talked about this, the acceleration has to be opposite of the velocity. So if you're calling all these numbers positive, that means the acceleration needs to be negative. So when I go plug my numbers in here, it's going to look like this. Uh, my final velocity is 0. Initial is 20, so that's 400 over 2 times negative 3. Right? And this gives me negative 400 over negative 6. And that negatives cancel out, right? So I end up with a positive number, which makes sense. And that's going to end up being 66 and two thirds, like 66.67 meters. And so anytime you do these, it's best to look and make sure that your numbers make sense, right? So this says that the bus is traveling forwards and it's slowing down. So the, the fact that you got a positive number means that it went this way, in the positive x direction. If you ended up with a negative number, right, like if I didn't make that 6 negative, you would have ended up with negative 66.67 meters, which would have meant that your bus was traveling this way, but it ended up in the negative direction. And that right there should tell you, oh, I screwed up, right? So whenever you get done with the answer, check 
that your positives and negatives make sense, right? If it doesn't make sense, then either come and ask or go back and look and see if you messed up with a sign somewhere. Okay, so I hope that gave you enough information on how to use these equations, like what the variables mean, how to rearrange and solve, and just make you more comfortable with using these, right? So the only thing that we're going to do a little bit different in class is solving multiple step, like things that have multiple unknowns. So let's say, for instance, I need to take the acceleration from here, solve it, and plug it in here so that I can solve for how far an object went, right? It's the same thing, you just have to solve this one first and then this equation second. It's a multiple step problem. That's the only thing, that's the only way it gets more complicated than how I just should. So if you didn't understand anything or you have any questions about something, leave it in the comments at the end of the video and I'll try to go over it before class. Uh, and that, we'll see you then. Thank you.